Hello, everybody. Gil Martino here, and welcome to Ahoy Now, Right Now. Hey, it's National Dragonfly Man Day, that one day in the calendar where everybody celebrates the greatest crime-fighting superhero that ever lived, Dragonfly Man. And we have a special guest for you right now, none other than Dragonfly Man himself, the great Rock Sterling who the star of the Dragon Man series that absolutely ruled the world in 1967. Rock, how you doing? Welcome. I'm doing great, Gil, and uh, thank you very much for having me on. Uh, just one sec, as you may know, it's a uh, cocktail hour in uh, Los Angeles, so I have a little dry martini here. Well, it's good to see that you're still staying in and, shape. Uh, I used to, uh, I learned to use them on the set, you know, when I was uh, a young guy in a great uh, winged uniform. You know, uh, Rock, I, I, I don't even know where to start when we think about all the memories associated with Dragonfly Man, but uh, what, what comes to your mind when I say that word, Dragonfly Man? Well, you know, it says to me, rebirth. It's kind of like, you know, I got that job kind of by accident. And once I got into it, stardom came. And, and then soon enough, well, let me just have another sip of this. Uh, this is really good gin. You ever had the uh, Pullman's gin from England? Well, yeah, I, wait, yes, of course, of course. And it's ah. really great to hear that you're, you're uh, enjoying life as you should. Uh, and, but, um, any other uh, stories, uh, background stories? It must have been exciting back in the 1960s, putting together such a oh, hit there were, there were millions, you know. I mean, we had uh, we had a lot of people on the set that uh, were the what we called the creatives, and uh, they always seemed to have you know a funny look in their eye and a strange looking cigarette hanging <laughs> in their hand. It was a, it was just it was like almost uh, illegal. But uh, might have might have actually been illegal, <laughs> but I know you wouldn't uh, uh, break no, the law, no. being the Dragonfly Man hero that you were. Uh, yeah. but, um, do you uh, have any great recollections, uh, or do you have any recollections at all of the romance, the famous romance between you and Dame Edith Sutherland Trotsky, the famous British actress uh, who played War oh, Chest? Yeah, I I don't know that this is who is the audience for this interview, Gil. Well, I think where the audience is every every man, woman, and child out there who loves a, a superhero well, you know, who's not afraid to break some eggs and make an omelet. Do you remember Dame Edith? She was quite a lady, as I recall. Dame was actually, her name was Dame Edith, but she was no lady. <laughs> what do you mean by that? She, well, um, you know how sometimes women are have a reputation that they love a man in uniform? Yeah. Well, you put wings on that uniform, and it's a home run every time. Well, you know, that's interesting, and, and maybe we should move on from that. Uh, um, do you stay in touch with uh, Jason Happenstance, the young actor who played Stinger, your favorite sidekick? I did. Uh, I, I did. Uh, Jason and I were in rehab together in the, uh, in the, in the mid-1970s, and... Uh, we both kind of um, got through it together and uh, supported one another, and uh, now we're we're good friends. And uh, he's a uh, he's now a mixicologist here at a bar in uh, Santa Monica. Well, that's awfully good. What what uh, are you doing these days, Rock? Well, I've been doing a lot of things. I, I I've been uh, I've been trying to cut an album for uh, country music. I and can the, only you know, imagine. Because uh, some of the people on the set, you know, thought I had a really fine voice, and uh, I always some of my favorite people were like Chris Christopherson and Merle Haggard and guys like that. So I thought maybe I would try to do something that would be a tribute to them. But uh, so far, I don't uh, have anybody yet uh, financing the project. Did you ever have a chance to play your music for any of those great stars? I uh, the only one I ever got to be with was. Um, I was on Hee Haw for a while with Buck Owens. That's truly a great star. You know, you, you, you as a celebrity are second to none. And um, what's it like being 
as famous as 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 you are. Well, it's pretty it's pretty neat. Uh, you know that my neighbor is uh, Tom Hanks. No, I did not know that. Yeah, we both live up here in Pacific Palisades. He got here uh, because he made you know hundreds of millions of dollars of being a fantastic talent. And uh, I got here because when I was working in a laundry back in uh, 1983 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, me and a bunch of the other workers won a lottery ticket. And uh, my, my share was, you know, good enough that I could buy a home up here in Pacific Palisades. Well, that's a great story, and uh, I think nobody deserves success more than Rock Sterling. I think everybody who remembers Dragonfly Man would feel the exact same way. Why do you think uh, the public remains so infatuated all these years with Dragonfly Man and Rock Sterling? Now, all of the all of the other superheroes were kind of assholes, right? I mean, you look at Superman, he was came out of a rock, you know, and he tried to be a reporter for a small city newspaper. That's dorky. Captain Marvel was a lame imitation of him. You know, Spider-Man did pretty well, but he came after me. He was based on me. Because I used to flutter around and stick to walls and shit. And that was the whole basis for Spider-Man. Right, but right. I think I stood out because uh, I was distinct and uh, from all of those other characters I had a better costume you know the green and purple just like somehow people just took to it they loved the green and purple and, and the uh, writing you know the script was fantastic because I could be punching out a guy a villain and my my line would be you know you would be a more difficult competitor if you had ate more vegetables so, you Those know, the, were the kinds of poetic the writing, lines. The writing was epic. I mean, you know, we can't say enough about, you know, the, the mindset behind uh, the dialogue. The dialogue was always spectacular. I remember once, I remember once, uh, you know, descending into a great battle with evil. And my whole argument was that uh, they hadn't studied mathematics hard enough. That well, was... I used to I would get letters and phone calls from parents all over the country saying, we love you, thanks for that note to my children. And I give all the credit to the writer, whoever the hell he was. I mean, he was one great guy. You know, um, I remember when they canceled the show, um, yeah. feeling a sense of outrage. Uh, you must have felt really angry. Well, I, I thought it was, I thought it happened, you know, it pretty much happened coincident with the Tet Offensive in Vietnam. When everything started to fall apart for America, even though, you know, we won that battle, but we lost the psychological battle. Well, that's what happened on my show. We lost the psychological battle. People got tired of, you know, some guy fluttering his wings and, you know, saying pithy things about education and diet. I, I've always heard stories about the uh, the gruesome way that they broke the news that you had been canceled. And I was wondering if you would want to revisit that or maybe if it's too painful. But, you know, the uh, billboard well, billboard on the streets. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Well, there was a worse part than that. Uh, you know, th and this is why I think, excuse me, I uh, have one more little hit on this martini. Ah. Where were we? The um, unfortunate way in which they notified oh, you that your hit series had, was being canceled. I came into the studio one morning. I always got there at 8.03 a.m. and had had a, you know, a donut and coffee. And on the floor in the middle of the set, there was like a pile of burned rubble. And it was my costume and the wing somebody had squirted you know some kind of lighter fluid on it and just threw a match on it <laughs> and there was a note under it you know that didn't burn and said we won't be needing you today or ever so it wasn't it wasn't long after that i went into rehab i can only imagine well you know we're almost out of time and I just, again, want to thank you for taking time out from your busy, busy schedule. And 
uh, on behalf of the uh, the Dragonfly Nation, I would uh, like to request one last time if you would say your famous catchphrase. Uh, just just one last time. I would be happy to. Fly backwards, and no one will ever know where you've been. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard Rock Sterling, the great Rock Sterling, a memory from the past who has never lost any, any relevance uh, in this current age. It's National Dragonfly Man Day, and Rock, thanks for being with us. Uh, it's my pleasure, and uh, I'm going to come and join you in Tulsa. Is that where the festival is? That's uh, where things are going, I guess, yes. All right, we'll see All you right. then. Take care. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Fly right. <laughs>